Hey everybody, what's going on? We are back with some sort of Convalaria, taking a look at another fantastic epic today in Divine Grace. Now we recently took a look at Abyss, who is just a debuff machine. So if you feel like you are hurting for debuffs and you've got her sitting in your roster unbuilt, uh, I would highly recommend that you check the video out in the top corner of the video right now uh, and see if it convinces you to give her a go because man, she's been so good. I've really enjoyed using her. Uh, but today, the star of the show is Divine Grace. He's a ranged champ with some really cool mechanics that I want to show to you guys because honestly, at this point, he has taken the place of my fake Hal. If I if I need range for something, I'm bringing Divine Grace over fake Hal. And that's just my preference. Maybe you feel differently. Maybe you're a big fan of fake Hal. I'm certainly not saying fake Hal is bad. I'm just saying I like this guy better and I'm going to explain why today. All right. So we'll jump in and take a look at the skills, talk about how I've built him and why, and then we'll take a quick look at him in action somewhere so you can see see what he looks like on the battlefield, okay? So if we come down to rank one, we have covering shot. I love this. I love this skill so much. This is one of the reasons that I like this guy as much as I do. Uh, performs assisting attack against all enemies within four tiles of the character, dealing 80% damage. The skill can be used up to two times per round. Assisting attack specifically prepares to launch an attack on the enemy within a certain range. When the target is under an ally's active single target attack, attacks it simultaneously. Two times per round is really nice. This makes it really easy to get, get some of those beefier characters out of there. And the nice thing about this is, is it's got four tiles of range, which means you don't have to be right up on somebody and put him in any danger. You can have him hanging out behind your units that are doing single target damage by a tile or two even. You've got space to, to stay behind and he'll join the attack and he can smack. He can do some pretty good damage. So I love covering shot. Flaming shot, also a really viable option. Again, we talk about this frequently. Uh, I like stuff happening passively. I like stuff happening between my active turns or not during the active turns of my characters. The more I can get them to do that I'm not controlling, the better for my play style. But this is also a fantastic skill, and I almost went with it, honestly. Uh, deal 70% AoE damage to one enemy within a cross-shaped range around the character, and deals 40% AoE damage fire to all enemies within uh, one tile around the target. So you see, he shoots the flame arrow, it hits the target, and then everybody around that target takes AoE damage as well. I'd love that. I think that's so cool. Uh, I may, depending on how much I end up liking this guy and want to invest in him, I really want to see this skill in action. We may come back and use a uh, Castalia. Castalia? I don't know how to say that on it. Because uh, I think that's a really cool skill as well. But again, for what I'm going for and my play style, this is right up my alley. I love covering shot. So again, no wrong option, but I went with covering shot. For his rank three, Light of Sanctuary. It's a support in an instant. This is also such a good skill, and we're going to talk about why uh, in, a, in a second. Single target healing restores 25% of the target's HP. So it can be used on him, or it can be used on someone else, which is also really cool. He's got a he's got a heal that he can use without wasting his turn, basically. Um, if the target is unharmed, the effect changes, which grants increased damage to and increased magic defense to, for two turns. So if he doesn't need the heal, he buffs himself in, his, his self instead. Himself instead is what I'm trying to say, uh, which I think is so cool. I think it's so cool that he's got this skill that can basically, basically be used at any point. He doesn't, you don't have to sit on it, right? If you don't need the heal, buff yourself with it. It's, it's so good, all right? On the other side of rank three, uh, the character gains 15% bonus attack and 30% bonus defense while not affected by any debuff and affected by at least three buffs. So also pretty cool, right? I think this is a pretty handy skill, but again, I like this. I like the idea of him being able to buff himself and we'll talk about why very shortly. At rank five, when hit by an active AOE attack, the damage taken is decreased by 30%. I figured this would be a good one for him since He's generally gonna be separated from the team a little bit. He may take some AOE damage, right? Some, somebody might fire some, some AOE damage back. He could catch a stray every now and then. I thought this would be pretty helpful. So it's what I decided to go with. Over here, increases the healing received by 10% when receiving healing gains damage too for one turn. I think this is also an excellent choice. However, I 
I thought the damage reduction might be a good way to go here, okay? Let's jump out here real quick and talk about, maybe it's his trait that I wanna take a look at. Increases passive, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, physical attack by 5%. The character additionally deals 15% more damage when having three or more buffs. The reason that I think this skill is so good is because he takes care of two of the buffs himself straight out of the gate. So if we can get one more buff on him from somewhere else, then we get the extra damage from him. We get the 15% extra damage out of him, which is pretty substantial, right? Pair that with the steel crossbow, which gives us ignore 15% of the target's defense. And you could see where this dude really starts to have some damage potential because again, if we get three buffs on him, we're getting 15% more damage. He's giving himself damage up too. So damage increases by 20%. If the other buff we can get on him is an attack buff, he becomes a sniper. He, he pumps out some real damage with just a little bit of setup required. And again, he can do most of it himself if we just have to get an attack buff on him from elsewhere. But any buff helps his damage, right? So I think Steel Crossbow is a pretty good weapon for him. We're also <laughs> fairly limited in our options right now, so I'm sure there's better options as we get better gear. But for now, this was pretty obtainable, the Steel Crossbow. I can also enhance it, which I might do. I might do. I might do it right now, actually. Let's do that. I must have just gotten this. I don't think I had this when I built him last night. All right, GG, more damage. For here, we took the increases physical attack by 3%. Again, I think that was a pretty good option, also fairly limited. And then over here, we just increased his crit by 15%. I think that's a, a pretty solid option as well, right? And eventually we'll get to the point where we're leveling these things up and getting more perks out of them. But for now, that's uh, what we're going with. As far as the rest of his skills for rank seven, We've got an aura, increases crit by 20% for other allies within two tiles around the character, and storm sniping deals 120% damage to one enemy with a cross-shaped range around the character. For each tile between the character and the target, uh, deals 10% more damage. Remember what I said about him being a sniper? <laughs> this, is a, this is a really cool skill. I will probably take this one when I get him to rank seven. I think this one's cool, but again, with the way that I'm using him, I'm, I'm sort of keeping his distance from the rest of the team when I can. So I don't know that this would benefit anybody super heavily for the way that I'm using him. You could very well just surround him with your units and protect him that way and move him around with, with your team. Certainly a viable option, but for my play style and what I wanna do with him, I think sniping is gonna be the way to go. And then here we increase the, uh, we improve the basic attack, deals 100% physical damage and increases crit by 15% before attacking or increases crit damage by 15%. I'll probably take critical strike. If you get him to a point where he's got the crit rate necessary, maybe crit damage would be the way to go. I guess I'll have to see what his build is looking like when I arrive here. It'll probably be a little while before we start getting anybody to rank nine, right? But anyway, that's, that's kind of my tentative plans for him. No wrong options though. Seems like a pretty cool tree all the way up. So let's jump in real quick. Again, just to kind of let you see what he looks like in action. We'll do, we've been doing level up training. It's the, the best demonstration I can really give without spending a real long time doing a stage. And I don't think that's necessary. I think the whole point of these is really just to see them in action. So why don't we just put him here for Cole. We'll run Abyss and Flare and hopefully give him an opportunity to do the majority of the damage and take a look at at what he looks like on auto. All right, so we'll, we'll leave it on slow. We'll turn it on auto and then see what, what he does. There's Abyss doing Abyss stuff. Again, if you haven't seen that video on Abyss, you really ought to go check it out. She is, she's so cool, man. And then same with Flare. Flare is still my favorite epic. Of, of the epics that I've tested and have any exposure to so far, Flare is my favorite. Flare is this one right here, if you don't know. And Flare is just so good, it's crazy. So he's got, he's got cool range, really beefy damage, a little bit of a knockback there. So we got a little bit of AOE. Yeah, she's going to take him out. Again, not a, not a, a deep demonstration of his abilities. It's, it's kind of difficult to do until we unlock the next stage and maybe they're harder and, and maybe we'll be able to showcase some of these epics a little bit better once we get here. But for now, that's kind of what we're, we're limited to. 
but I think he's got a lot of potential. And again, at, at any point that I decide that I need range in my comp, I'm using Divine Grace over Fake Hell right now. I think I think Divine Grace is um, really cool champ. So if you've got any other epics you want me to take a look at, drop them in the comments down below. I really appreciate you guys uh, engaging the way you have on these videos. They've been a lot of fun to make. And as you guys make more suggestions, I'm going to discover more epics that I'm probably also a big fan of. So uh, I really appreciate that. Seems like a win-win. So uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope it put Divine Grace on your radar. Let me know if you decide to build him and if he does any, any work for you. Uh, that'll be cool to know. If you want to join my Discord and share anything in there, we've got a pretty active sort of convalaria section, and there's a link below to join the Discord. So uh, maybe we'll see you in there. I appreciate you guys watching. Hope it was helpful, and we'll see you in the next one.